Well, this didn't go as planned, but let's see what we can still learn from this chaos. What I want to do in this project is try to match four n-channel JFETs and see if they can change the behavior of this cheap, I think it was $16, guitar phase effect pedal from AliExpress. It never really worked right, so I adjusted the internal bias trim pot to get it to work as best as possible, but it's still making background hiss noises, and the sound effect itself is weak, and it's just destroying the original audio. So I'm wondering if it may be because the JFETs in this circuit are not well matched. So I wanted to take this phase effect circuit, remove the JFETs, put sockets, and then test the ones that came with it to see if they were matched, and if not, replace them with matched JFETs. So to help do that, I put together a PCB to match N-channel JFETs with help from today's sponsor, PCB Way. What I'm doing in this project is attempting to match some n-channel JFETs for consistent behavior at a certain operating voltage so they can be used in a four-stage all-pass filter circuit acting as a guitar phase effect pedal. This version of the schematic comes from Electro Smash. Over on the left side of the schematic we just have power supply kind of stuff, an input audio buffer, but really we care about the all-pass filters here. So the audio comes in from the buffer into this first all-pass filter network, and the output goes to the input of another all-pass, and there's four of those total. An all-pass filter will have no gain or loss of the signal level, ideally, but it will have a phase shift which is where the term phase shifter comes from in this guitar circuit. And for each stage of all pass filtering here, 1 over 2 pi RC will give the frequency where for a certain stage the phase shift will be 90 degrees. And for that RC value combination, other frequencies present will have their phase shifted by different amounts depending on how this calculates out. The end result of this network is, if you're putting in an audio signal, by the time you get through four of these all-pass filters with their phase shift, a frequency plot of this filter response would show that you have two notches throughout the audio band. So you're going to get loss of the audio signal at those certain frequencies. If that's a sine wave at a certain frequency, and these RC values on each of these happen to be set up in a way where at this frequency you get a phase shift of 180 degrees on the output of this, the output sine wave is going to be an inverted copy of the input. And basically that cancels out and you get no signal at that frequency for these RC values in all of these filters. And you get two of these points of cancellation the way this all chains together. So the way we're getting this phase shifted signal to cancel with the original, the input buffer not only comes into the all pass filters, a copy of the input signal comes over here to a summing amplifier. So that's where we are combining the original with the 180 degree phase shifted copy, cancelling it out at specific frequencies. And if we were to change either the capacitor or the resistor on these filters, we'd be moving these notches up or down along the audio frequency range. So what that means is, let's say this is a 1 kilohertz sine wave, if we can vary this automatically up and down in resistance, and we can sweep these notches up and down the frequency band, at some point we'll be able to hear the unaffected 1 kilohertz audio. Then when these notches come sweeping through 1 kilohertz, this 1 kilohertz tone is going to get quieter, and as they then pass it, they're going to get louder again. So then other frequencies, like if you have a 5 kilohertz tone, 
the one kilohertz may be suddenly quiet and the five kilohertz is still the same as the original volume. So you end up hearing this sort of a modulation, however you want to perceive it. It could be like treble sounds are getting louder and quieter, like somebody's turning a tone control up and down or something like that. It could be if you do this faster or slower, it may sound different, like a shimmering sound going on. So to automate this, each of these all pass filters have an end channel JFET in parallel with this filter resistor. Having the gate of all of these JFETs connected together, there's a low frequency oscillator. Essentially, it's changing the gate voltage up and down, over and over, changing the effective parallel resistance of the JFET resistance and this fixed resistor. So, by doing that, the notches are moving up and down, so you're temporarily cutting out and bringing back in the audio and hearing the overall modulation effect. But in order for this to work effectively, when you have four FETs in this case, they should be well matched so they behave as if they are the same value resistance at the same voltage applied to the gate. Otherwise, if some of these stages are seeing a different RC value, it'll have different cutoff frequencies on each stage, and these notches may be really shallow or something, and it may not have the audio effect perceivable anymore. So this is the circuit I'll be using to match N-channel JFETs for the purpose of going into an audio phase effect. This is based on a circuit from RG Keen I'll link to. Ultimately, what we're trying to do, I've drawn in a few things here. So first, we're running the board at 9 volts, and we have two op amps. One's just a unity gain follower, where we have two 10K resistors. So we have 4.5 volts being buffered, and it is going into the non-inverting terminal of the second op amp. Now the op amp is going to want to set its output to do whatever it takes to make the inverting input the same 4.5 volts. So what we have here is the output going to the gate of a FET. I'm showing this as some headers up here and then two FET footprints. This is really representing just one FET. I can put sockets on the board to connect a FET temporarily. I can have headers going down into a breadboard so I can put a FET into a breadboard. And I have two different SOT23 surface mount footprints with different FET pinouts. So if I want to test one of those, I can try laying it here and pushing down to make contact while testing. So the output of the op amp just goes to the gate of a FET. And this gate voltage is going to start changing with the op amp until we get 4.5 volts on the inverting input. So on that input, we have a voltage divider with a 10K fixed to ground, and then going to 9 volts, we have drain and source of the N channel JFET. So the op amp is controlling the gate, which is controlling the resistance of the JFET channel. And at some point, we're going to see 4.5 volts at this junction, and the op amp will be stabilized, we'll have a fixed voltage on the gate that we can measure with a multimeter, and that gate voltage represents what voltage it takes to make this JFET look like a 10K resistor. And for the purposes of the phaser effect circuit, that style of matching is considered suitable. There's the N-channel JFET matching circuit. It's plugged into the breadboard, so 9 volts and ground to power it are coming from a bench supply. Then the test points for voltage gate and voltage source are going over to this multimeter. Then I can either plug FETs into the machine pin sockets or directly into the breadboard because those header pins are going there as well. I have some N-channel JFETs here to test. So I'm putting them where they belong for drain source gate. Now I can either momentarily press the button and it's minus 1.72 volts gate source to get this to look like a 10K resistor, or I can just turn on the slide switch if I want to leave it on. 
So if I'm trying to match a bunch of JFETs to respond similarly at looking like a 10k resistance, I would write down and somehow mark these or put them somewhere so later I can just look through the list and see which ones match. This one is minus 1.54 volts gate source to look like a 10k resistor. So I'm going to lay that one right here. I already pre-did these. Minus 1.52 volts gate source. So that's similar. I'll put it with that potentially matched set. Again, minus 1.52 volts gate source. So now we have three of those. Minus 1.52 volts. So already I have four matched JFETs that act like a 10K resistor at the same voltage gate source. I do have this one more. These came out of a lot of 30 that I bought all at once. This one is minus 1.19 or so volts gate source. So that one would go over here with the one that was around minus 1.72 or 3 volts. So that's how much variance we can get in the same purchase of parts. So I put machine pin sockets on the four FET areas of this phase pedal. Now I can test these and swap in different ones. I've got the FETs back in the same position they started in, and I have the bias trim pot adjusted for the best possible result out of this particular circuit. Then I had swapped in different FETs. I had a matched set of four, and then I had a control FET over here, which is way different from all of these. This one is minus 1.73 volts to act like the same resistance. So putting this FET in the circuit should definitely cause some difference in behavior. But what I was noticing was putting different FETs in, matched or not matched, or a different set of matched at a different VGS threshold, when I would then re-bias the trim pot to work with the new VGS specification to get it phasing again, I couldn't really much tell a difference. I don't think it's working right at all. So it's got all kinds of background hiss or noise, plus the effect itself seems like it's not kicking in very strong. So I'm going to do a comparison with what I believe this circuit is modeled after, the MXR Phase 90. Right now, neither effect is on. We'll hear what that sample sounds like on its own. Then we'll turn on the working phase circuit so we can hear what's going on. Then we'll compare this one, which is configured stock from when I bought it. So here's with no effect first. So, for demonstration purposes, I'm keeping the speed relatively fast because it's more obvious what is supposed to be happening. This one also has the speed set relatively fast. So I'll start again and then quickly demo this one and then switch to this one. So, with no sound on, we hear all this background hiss, static, and you can hear it's swelling the volume up and down, it's modulating it. So if I adjust the trim pot until this static goes away, the whole effect goes away and all you get is a compromised, lower volume, bad EQ version of the audio because this circuit is just somehow not set up right. So, if I'm swapping FETs, it's hard to tell if bad went to more bad. So I was wondering, can I salvage this whole investigation? I was wondering originally if the FETs were the problem, not being matched. But now I know the original FETs plus another set that I matched at a different VGS also didn't really work. But in the meantime, just to continue on the path of what happens when FETs are not matched. I took away the MP3 player and I'm putting in a sine wave. So there's the sine wave itself not being affected yet. 
I set the speed a lot slower now so we'll be able to see what's going on here. If I turn it on, it swells up at two different amplitudes. It goes up toward the pointer a couple of times and then it only goes halfway it looks like. So there's two and then halfway. That's just what's happening at this speed. But the thing to note is the signal is very clean. It's not distorted. It's not really noisy. It doesn't have weird peaks in it. So now, going back to the stock phase cheap pedal, and again, there's no volume levels or anything. All we have is the speed control. We can see we have a greatly attenuated signal for one thing. So if I scale it up, I'm going to try adjusting the speed slower. So aside from all the disturbances like the noise making this sine wave look thicker because it's got probably higher frequency noise on it, it's also distorting. As it gets quiet, it's got these extra bumps. It's like it's doing an octave effect almost. So there's all kinds of signal distortion going on. And I wasn't really able to get rid of that by changing the bias trim pot. So now, if I turn off the power on the effect, swap out one of those stock FETs, turn it back on. Of course now it's not phasing at all because I need to readjust this bias. Fully counterclockwise on the bias, we don't have any phasing, so I'm going clockwise until I get something happening. Okay, it's slowly doing something. If I go too far clockwise, we go back to there's nothing happening. So right here we notice when the sine wave is going down, the top is kind of getting cut off, and you can sort of see the beginning of two peaks on the top half of the wave, but it's not strong enough to even form the peaks of the matched set. Now I went more counterclockwise, and it's still distorting, especially when it's quiet. It flattens out on the top. So the signal, when it goes quiet, it's getting basically destroyed. It goes almost flat line, and you only have the bottom peaks, not the top anymore. That's probably the best I can adjust this visually with a sine wave on the scope. But again, the signal gets destroyed when the amplitude goes low. It's not like a volume modulated amplitude. So from this, we're able to see that changing FETs with different properties does change the performance. We just can't see how it sounds because this thing doesn't really work in the first place. I think I need to either try and fix this or just start from scratch on a breadboard and see if I can build one that works and then maybe I can evaluate the difference between different kinds of FET matching.